스팀과 허리케인 같은 크고 온난화에 따른 재해가 10년 전보다 40%나 늘어 북극 빙하는 30년 전에 비해 빠른 속도로 녹고 있습니다. 오는 2070년에는 모두 녹아내릴 것이라는 관측 세계적인 휴양지인 인도양의 몰디브 해수면 상승 속도가 빨라지면서 수몰 위기에 놓였습니다. 아프리카에선 물 부족으로 극심한 식량난이 가시화되는 환경의 역습을 인류가 완전히 극복할 수 있을지는 의문입니다. Global warming and unusual temperatures pose a threat to the existence of humankind in the 21st century. Typhoons and floods have destroyed our livelihood. The glaciers of the North and South Poles are melting, and entire nations are in danger of being submerged by the rising sea levels. On the other hand, severe droughts are causing food crises, leading to widespread suffering all over the world. Global warming is resulting in natural disasters that shorten the Earth's lifespan. Washington, D.C., the National Press Club. The first recipients of the Sunhak Peace Prize were recognized here. The first recipients of the Sunhak Peace Prize are Kiribati President Anote Tong, who has worked at the forefront of the climate change crisis to ensure the future of humankind, and Dr. Moda Dugu Gupta from India, who has pioneered the Blue Revolution to solve future food crises. The first recipients of the Sunhak Peace Prize are Kiribati President Anote Tong and Indian marine biologist Dr. Moda Dugu Gupta. How have these two individuals contributed to world peace? Let us visit Dr. Gupta at the Chennai Marina Beach in southern India. Dr. Gupta visits the ocean in his free time. The amount of so low amount of fish that they were able to catch, hardly there are two to three kilograms of fish they were able to catch. After putting about six to seven hours fishing in the sea, every year the size of the fish is going down. The fishermen are growing concerned. How long have you been catching fish? Twenty years. Climate change has caused a decrease in catch volumes. Is it because recently fish could not be caught? While recently catching fish has been difficult, it is difficult to determine the exact amount of fish caught. Some days it might be 200 kilograms, and other days not even one would be caught. Well, being born and brought up in a coastal village, we used to go to the beach and see the fishermen coming. Then I thought the technology has developed so much. Is there, is there not in a way to help this poor fish farmer, fishermen, to make a better living. So that encouraged me to get into this field. Global urbanization and industrialization is causing global warming to continue, which is the principal factor in climate change. Half of the global village is experiencing strange temperatures that have brought about a severe food crisis. To improve the lives of impoverished people, Dr. Gupta has devoted his entire life to designing the Blue Revolution and dedicating it toward improving fish farming. Southern India, the Tamil Nadu Fisheries University Research Lab. Dr. Gupta periodically visits this place, even in his retirement. He is a consultant to the university's research lab. The experimental fish farm has reached its peak in commercial sales. So 1,500 fish are being grown in this small area. So in, in six months time, they will reach about 750 kilograms. So they are trying to demonstrate here, the farmers can grow this fish in small areas like this. And in six months, in six months time, they'll be able to reach to the market size. The same thing, you can see the bigger fish there. In our country, the most well-known kind of tilapia is the Nile tilapia. It is Asia's national freshwater fish. How big does this fish become? 8 to 10 kilograms. It can grow up to that size. But this is the ideal size for export. After Norwegian salmon, 
tilapia is the second most traded fish in the world. In 1962, Dr. Gupta began working at the Indian Council of Agricultural Research. After Dr. Gupta visited farming sites and experimented with a new fish farming method, he began to witness a phenomenal six-fold increase in the output of fish. Well, when we started, you know, and showed that using the agriculture byproducts, the small-scale farmers can increase their production, double the production, that's why at that time they called aquaplosion. That means explosion within the water, what we call now as blue revolution. At the Tamil Nadu Fisheries University, Indian red carp and mouth-brooding tropical fish are the subjects of both small and large-scale experiments, as Dr. Gupta carefully studies the research results. This is an indigenous variety, sir. That is an advantage. And okay. another thing is most of the ornamental fishes are exported, uh, sorry, uh, uh, imported varieties. Yes, right. So we, we, we need to popularize indigenous uh, Indian varieties. Yeah. So that is uh, one area we are concentrating now. Yes, we are trying to sell it. Yeah. Sell it, yeah. Sell it. So you think this will help the farmers, what you are doing now? Yeah, definitely. This intervention will help us, uh, help the farmers very much uh, to uh, increase the survival rate to almost like 70-80% survival rate. Huge I always tell to the scientists working here or elsewhere, focus on the needs of the farming community. Science is meant for them. Science is not for science sake. Science is for development sake. Despite being in his 70s, Dr. Gupta continues his activities enthusiastically. This is going to be one big trip from here. I'll be going to Bangladesh. Bangladesh could be called the water nation with all its rivers, reservoirs, and countless lakes. Every year, monsoons cause flooding in over half of the country. As the poorest Asian country, Bangladesh suffers from a food shortage. Dr. Gupta's farming research reached its peak in Bangladesh. So when I was working here and advising the scientists of the Bangladesh Fisheries Research Institute, this was the, my room and office here where I was working and advising the in research institute. Around 30 years back. Yes, 30 years back. This is precisely where Dr. Gupta developed the method of using ponds for fish production. Although his research began in a small lab, his fish farming method had a positive impact on the entire Bangladeshi territory. During the latter part of 1980, most of Bangladesh's children were suffering from malnutrition. In order to help these starving children, Dr. Gupta thoroughly examined street drains, reservoirs, and ponds. I got the impression that I thought I should do something so that fish can be produced in a seasonal water body, which were, till then, were not being utilized as a fish farm. Dr. Gupta traveled to small villages and recommended the use of abandoned ponds to grow fish. His first achievement was being able to produce a large amount of fish in a short time period. To me, Dr. Gupta's greatest achievement was certainly the introduction of tilapia. It's very fast growing and it will become cheaper even though it's still very profitable. Dr. Gupta spread the idea of integrated aquaculture agriculture to farmers, which is a method that combines livestock and fish farming. Dr. Gupta developed a simple fodder with byproducts such as rice bran and the cultured fish resulted in revenue for the village people. Once they saw the quality of the flesh and easy to grow and make more profit, more and more farmers are coming for this tilapia farming. Thirty years later, the environmentally friendly aquaculture has resulted in unrecognizably clean pond water with large numbers of growing fish. Even now, many of the villagers continue to benefit economically from the integration of rice and fish farming. Well reputed in the society, Dr. Gupta can be referred to as the saint of impoverished countries. Whenever the nets are hauled in, the entire village bustles with excitement. 
Having produced 7,500 tons of fish in 1980, the aquaculture industry now produces more than one million tons. All of the fish in the ponds will soon be turned into profit. This can be credited to Dr. Gupta's blue revolution. The owner of this farm is a young man. What kind of fish is this? Rohu, they call it. Rohu? It's a car. Ah, this is also a car. There are three types of cars here. This young man inherited the pond from his parents. I used to study at the university, but then I started fish farming. I want to expand the fish farming areas. We need farmers like him, more farmers like him, so that they'll be able to contribute to poverty reduction and food security. Freshwater fish hatcheries can be found here in Bangladesh. This is tilapia. Now this is ready for transport to be purchased by the farmers to stock in the pond for growing to the table size fish. These young fish will be readily supplied to farmers. Hundreds of thousands of young fish are filtered and the exact volume is measured before the fish are sorted into highly sealed pots. Once the farmers release the young fish into the pond, the fish farming process begins. Fish are purchased at fish markets all over Bangladesh. People buy and sell fish on the streets or from their cars. Merchants are enthusiastically at work here at the Jessore fish market. Before they knew it, aquaculture and fish farming had provided a foundation for them to revive the country's economy. About 300 people work here at the fish market. We supply fish to areas all over Bangladesh and are also exporting them now. This is another small village that has found success with fish farming. It's safe to say that the women who gather here are Dr. Gupta's disciples. Sixty percent of fish farmers are female. So they say that their income has nearly doubled after they have taken up to a scientific fish farming and this extra income they are using for educating their children. In addition to that, they are able to eat more fish, more animal protein and because of that they say their and their children's health is much better. As a result of women participating in fish farming, more than 500,000 ponds have been revived and total fish production has increased by 80 percent. As a result, Bangladeshi children's overall growth has improved. When I was younger, there were days when we didn't have food to eat, so we went hungry. But now we can eat whenever we want. We can choose from many varieties of fish and we also have many vegetables. News of pond fish farming and its success spread rapidly and now thousands of Bangladeshi women are utilizing this method. This is the home of a woman who has reaped economic benefits from fish farming in abandoned ponds. By selling the fish raised in the ponds, she was able to expand her house and buy more land. As a result, she started to receive recognition both within her family and from the surrounding community. These women have figured out a way to earn a substantial income. Women who have experienced gender discrimination and been disregarded have gained economic strength thanks to fish farming. I now have money for my children's education. We are living with much more stability than before. Children study hard to get into the university. 
buying books and reference materials without any burden. The villagers gather together to harvest the fish. The villagers take turns harvesting the fish. Dr. Gupta personally taught them how to produce vast amounts of fish in the abandoned ponds. His fish farming technique has become a source of happiness for the villagers. They can further improve their fish farming techniques, further increase their fish production, further increase their incomes, and better their nutrition, and come out of the poverty. They think that can be done because in the last three years they have already seen that their incomes have increased and their life has improved. So this is what message that. Dr. Gupta goes to another village to meet a woman who has been successful with fish farming. <laughs> this is um, Begum Jaida. He's a farmer who worked with me, we did research with her 30 years back. Uh, now she owns this pond. At that time, her house was a thatched small hut. Small hut. Now you see a permanent. So all this money she has made from the fish farming and able to improve her lifestyle. She's in a, been a very successful fish farmer. She had been living in a thatched house with a single room along with her seven children. But after learning fish farming, their living situation greatly improved. Just by looking at this well-appointed house, you can see that she is well off financially. Fish farming has completely changed this woman's life. Thirty years ago, Begum Jada lived in poverty. She was an ordinary housewife, but she was able to break free from an impoverished lifestyle. She worked harder than anyone else raising fish and was able to produce great results in less than a year. Fish farming wasn't easy back then, but now I am glad that I have been doing it. With my income, I had my daughters married, built this big house, and made other ponds. Different types of fish thrive in Begum Jada's pond. She has over 20 grandchildren who will continue her legacy in supporting fish farming. These children who have grown up observing fish farming are bringing this technique to their own generation. I'm extremely happy to see Dr. Gupta again. I think he is an incredible figure in the fishing industry. I'm reminded of when Dr. Gupta first came here to help us at this place here. She deeply treasures the fish farm that Dr. Gupta made for her. Dr. Gupta goes to see women's civil rights activist Angela Gomes. Yes, how are you? Here are some flowers. We are so happy that you received such a prestigious award. We women are also gaining courage. At that time, Dr. Gupta and Angela worked together for the sake of women who had no economic benefits. They had convinced the government to arrange for poorer female farmers to lease abandoned ponds. This relationship with the fishing industry became a turning point for women's rights. In 1999, Angela Gomes received the Magsaysay Award, which is also called the Asian Nobel Peace Prize. Women, they have no uh, rights for the land, land or property land. They have no right. Well, Dr. Gupta. Uh, give us the name of the woman 
there was written there's a registration from the government for the woman name the shelter sanctuary then uh, it was the woman name then uh, the, their confidence was increased while leading an ngo angela gomes has helped over 20000 women receive job training i got married 34 years ago since then it was very difficult I was hit several times by my husband. At that time, my son was five years old, and I said that we should leave the house because begging on the street would be better than living here. I raised fish and sold them at the market. I also owned some chickens and ducks, so I sold their eggs at the market as well. This is how I support my family. Because of this, my son was able to receive a good education. He received his master's degree and is now married. Unlike their miserable pasts, these women are now able to testify about their happy lives. If the same thing can be done all over the Bangladesh, there should not be shortage of it, not only fish, but the livelihood could be improved. <laughs> I reported on how the organization was doing and how it was being managed, and I then received the Ministry of Home Affairs Award. The mayor also gave me an award. Because of Dr. Gupta's influence, there is an increasing trend in the number of female fish farmers. Yeah, I've been seeing them back after nearly 20 years. In fact, I was very happy to see the progress that they have made. I'm very, very happy. They remember me, I remember them, and uh, the progress they have made makes me very happy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your 2005 World Food Prize laureate. I consider this as a recognition of the importance of fish in the nutritional security of the poor people in the developing countries. Thank you all. Dr. Gupta's contribution as the pioneer of the Blue Revolution was recognized worldwide. Dr. Gupta has developed the fishing industry to combat the food crisis and increased jobs within the fisheries population. His efforts have improved the lives of numerous impoverished people, reaching areas in Northeast Asia, across the Pacific, and in Africa. Dr. Gupta's devotion toward eliminating poverty centered on teaching others how to fish, rather than simply giving fish to the impoverished. His method has become a new solution to this generation's food shortage predicament. Just as Kiribati President Anote Tong, the champion standing on the forefront of climate change for peace and the future of humankind, and Dr. Moda Dugu Gupta of India, the pioneer of the Blue Revolution in combating the future food crisis, have given us hope for the future, so too will subsequent individuals make a difference in the world.